Okay, so for today, we are going to talk about uh, calculator techniques. We are going to continue our discussion about calculator techniques. And for our topic, we'll be having application of plane areas. Okay, so calculator techniques on how we are going to solve uh, applications of integral calculus in plane areas. Okay, so let's get started. So for the first one, find the area bounded by y equals x cubed plus minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 and the x axis and the vertical lines x equals 0 and x equals 2. So it's very simple. Okay, the formula that we are going to use is of course integral. And whenever we are trying to find the area, let us not forget that whatever equation we are going to input okay, in the integral must be having or must have an absolute value. Okay, the purpose of doing that is because we are getting the area and there is no negative area. Okay, that is what we are avoiding here so that we are always going to get the positive values. So don't forget the absolute sign. So simply, we are just going to uh, input the function. Okay, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. And we already have the limits. Okay, it says the x-axis bounded by the x-axis then the vertical lines, we have x equals 0 and x equals 2. So, we have from 0 to 2. So, that's just how simple it is. Click equal sign and therefore we have 2 as our answer. So, the answer here is 2. I just have to edit this. Okay, so, our answer here is 2 for the first number. Okay, so that's how simple it is to calculate it. Number two, find the area of the region bounded by y equals x squared minus 5x plus 6 and the x-axis and the vertical lines, x equals 0 and x equals 4. So same process that we are going to do. So I'm just going to find the replay here and then delete this and then input the given function. We have x squared minus 5x plus 6 and of course bounded by the x-axis the vertical lines x equals 0 to 4 so we also have the limits from 0 for the lower limit and for the upper limit we have 4 don't forget the absolute sign okay the absolute value so that we will be getting a positive number so again if we do that we have 17 all over 3 or 5.67 or in this case, it's already in the choices 17 all over 3. So that's how simple it is. If you're going to solve plain, uh, simple plane areas using our calculator. So don't, just don't forget the absolute sign. For number 3, determine the area of the region bounded by the curve y equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x and the x-axis as uh, 0, wherein x is uh, between 0 to 3. So, the same process, again. So, you have already the x cube minus 4x squared. Okay, and then plus 3x. At the same time, from 0 to 3. I'm going to change the upper limit, so it's 3. Again, still... The function or the equation is still on the inside of the absolute value. So if we do that, we'll be getting, let's just wait for our calculator, we have 3.08. Alright, so that's 3.08 and I think that's letter C. Let's have 37 divided by 12. That's 3.08. So it's the answer is letter C for this problem. Okay, going now to problem number four. Determine the area of the region bounded by the parabola y equals 9x squared, 9 minus x squared, and the line x plus y equals 7. So here, we already have two planes. We have a parabola and also we have a, uh, what do you call this, uh, a line. So we are going to find the area bounded by these two 
planes but as we can notice from the previous three problems that we have solved uh, the limits are already given and that's the difference between those problems a while ago and this problem so the problem here clearly is that we don't have the limits so we are going to solve for the limits so what I'm mean going to do is we have y equals 9 minus x squared and I'm going to express this line in terms of y also so that we have y upper minus y lower in the case of getting the area so I'm going to transpose x on the right side so that it becomes y equals 7 minus x so what I'm going to do to solve for the limits just equate y upper and y lower so you have 9 minus x squared equals okay equals the other y for from the line so that's y equals 7 minus x if I'm going to transpose it on the right side so that would be 7 minus x okay and I'm going to shift solve okay we are going to uh, enter okay in in shift solve we are going to enter a negative one and then take note of the answer and then another shift solve for a positive one value of x and take note of the result so and that will be your two limits before you get the integral of this or before you get the area of this okay so we have to shift solve first he is asking for the value of x let's say we first solve for negative one initially so you have a negative one value for the lower limit now again shift solve oops i just uh let me just rewrite again 9 minus uh, x squared equals uh, 7 minus x so negative 1 for a value of initial value of negative 1 so i'm going to shift solve again this time i'm going to enter a temporary value of 1 so that's what we are going to do this is to check if we have uh, values around the negative and values around the positive so that's what that's that that's why uh, we are not going to miss anything if we do this okay because in ship solve if we have x squared we have two roots right so i have to check for the negative and the positive so that's why i have to shift solve this giving an initial value for x of one all right so we have one so as you can see the value of x a while ago is negative one when we have an initial value of negative one when we shift solve again for the second time uh giving an initial value of one the answer here is x equals two so our limits shall be negative one to two okay so that's the intersection so we have alpha or integral again and then absolute okay so don't forget the absolute value or absolute sign okay so how are we going to do that we have 9 minus x squared parenthesis okay and then minus okay we have 7 minus x again this is y upper and y lower y upper y lower so we're going to minus it so see we have 7 minus x okay so again we minus because of the formula when we get the area ma manually we have y upper minus y lower okay and if it is expressed in x x right minus x left okay so our limits are what we get a while ago that's negative one and two okay for the intersection so clicking the equal sign we have nine all over two as our answer so as simple as that we already got the answer for the area bounded by these two planes okay so again first if we don't have any visible limits we need to solve first for the limits and at the same time when we got the limits from a negative value and the positive value of ship solve then that will serve as our limit and then use the formula integral and at the same time having an absolute value don't forget it it's either y upper minus y lower or x right minus x left okay so we have 9 all over 2 and for problem number 5 we have determined the area of the region bounded by the curves x raised to 4 or y equals x raised to 4 minus x squared and y equals x squared minus 1 so 
again, we don't have any limits visible. So, they are expressed both in terms of y. So, we can expect here, we can get the value of the intersection which will become our limits okay for our integral so again i'm going to shift solve with the negative value giving an initial negative one so we have a negative one as our answer so if i repeat it with giving negative 10 okay so let's try to see the zero the result is still negative one so the lower limit is negative one so if I shift solve this again for a value of positive 1, I have 1. So meaning, shift solve again, if I have positive 10, just for any positive value, so I have still 1. So negative 1 to 1, that's the limit. So if I'm going to enter this from negative 1 to 1. And then how about the, the, the factor inside or the equation inside? The absolute sign. So we have x raised to 4 minus x squared minus we have x squared minus 1. And again, another fun fact, do not forget the parentheses because of the minus here. Okay, as we all know, if we have minus, that minus sign is actually being uh, distributed. So that to avoid error in the y upper minus y lower or x right minus x left, better have a parenthesis for each of the y upper and the y lower. The same goes with x right and x left. So we are now ready to solve. Negative 1 to 1, we have 16 all over 15. And that is our answer for this problem. Okay. For problem number six, and I think this is going to be the, le the last problem that we are going to solve. Determine the area bounded by the curve. Y squared equals 9x all over 5 and the line Y equals X minus 2. So as you can see here, this is a Y squared and this is Y. So it's better to use X right minus X left here because we cannot just get the square root here. Okay, this is a... This is a uh, uh, a curve okay defined by its square so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cross multiply express this first equation in x all right so if, if i'm going to express that e equation in terms of x leaving the x side on the right side so it, be, it will become 5y squared all over 9 equals x so i hope you get that we just express this in terms of x and this in terms of x would be y plus 2. y plus 2 equals x. Transposing the negatives 2 on the left side. So in that, we can get the what? The intersection. So I have y plus 2 equals, I have uh, 5y squared all over 9. Expressing this in terms of x and then equating to get the y so if i do that let me just add a comma and then call y so that if this will shift solve it will be the y that, that that is being solved instead of x okay so same process i have to have an initial value of negative one and the lower limit is negative 1.2 Try another value just to make sure. Okay. Oops, I just uh, deleted it. So let me just rewrite it. Y plus 2 equals we have 5y squared all over 9. So and then comma alpha y. So again, we are done already. With solving it negatively, negative 1.2 is the lower limit. Shift solve it again for 1, giving an initial value of 1. So we have 3. So negative 1.2 to 3. So let me just rewrite is negative 1.2 to 3. That's the limits. That's the intersections. So don't forget the absolute. So again, 
how are we going to do this? Okay? So again, parenthesis. And then, we are going to treat here, okay? The, the, we have 5y squared all over 9, right? So we are going to treat the y as x because it, the, the calculator can only differentiate or integrate with respect to x. So I'm going to, instead of y, I'm going to change this into x when I type it in the calculator for integration. So I have 5x squared, okay, all over 9. And then I have to minus it with, okay, we have a while ago, y plus 2, so x plus 2. Okay, in terms of, this, is, this x is originally y. So we just inputted it here since we are integrating with respect to x. Okay, so I think we got it all. So we have to press equal and we have 340 all over 50. And that is 6.86. We have letter D as our answer. So and that's all. Okay, if you learned something from this video, please don't forget to subscribe. We have just calculated this problem without even having to graph it. Okay, so that's the power of calculator techniques. So again, I hope you learned something from this video. This is Injur Abbott. If you want to know more about calculator techniques, I have created a playlist. So make sure to watch those videos for you to be able to learn or master your calculator techniques. So thank you so much and God bless.